Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning into the broadcast today. We got a sermon that you're going to love entitled, Your Future is in Your Seed. Do you realize that the only voice your future hears is the voice of your seed? Think about that for a minute. This is a powerful message. Call a friend, tell them to turn that television on because I want to tell you something, they're going to learn something today because you see, your seed produces your legacy, produces everything, produces who you are, spiritually, physically, and financially. So let's go into this great sermon, part one of Your Future is in Your Seed. Watch this and be blessed and learn. Title of the message, Your Future is in Your Seed. I want to start reading with Mark chapter 4. Well, first, first, let's just start reading with verse 3. Hearken, behold, they went out a sower to sow, and it came to pass as he sowed, so he did something. Some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. Notice he didn't sow it, it fell by the wayside. Sometimes people have a way of getting stuff out of your hand without you giving it. That's called falling. Mm, mm. Some fell on stony ground, same way where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, and it will come up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it and yielded no fruit. Others fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up, increased, and brought forth some thirty, some sixty, and some a hundredfold. Then in verse 13, Jesus says, And he said unto them, Though you're not this parable, then how then will you know all parables? Or in other words, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't get this, you can't get anything else. The very foundation of what God does is sowing and reaping. Now notice, notice that verse 13. It's a very important verse in your life. It says, Know you not this parable, and how then will you know all parables? Or in other words, if you don't get this, you're not going to understand anything else because this is the foundation of any revelation, of any truth. That's the only way you can get saved by understanding this parable. For God so loved the world, He sold His Son, He sold Christ, He expected Christians. Pretty simple, wasn't it? So you got to understand that. The reason Jesus came was so you could get to God instead of God getting to you. God will get to you, but you need to get to God. Now I want to go over the verse 24. He said unto them, take heed what you hear. Faith cometh by hearing. It doesn't come by heard. So many people are trying to develop their lives on herd all years and years ago, but it comes by hearing. With what measure you meet, notice that, that's you doing that, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that faith, or unto you that hear, shall more be given. So notice this, you got given is not just the answer to receiving. You got to have faith in your giving. You have to have faith in your seed that it will come up. That's what it said. And unto you that hear, faith come by hearing. Unto you that faith shall more be given. So harvest comes by what? By faith, right? Through your giving. Now, verse, verse 25, for he that hath to him shall be given. Now notice that. And he that hath not from him shall be taken even that which he hath. Now some of the people that criticize this prosperity message ought to read that Bible. Ought to read that verse right there. Glory to God. J Jesus said, if you have something, I'm going to give you more. If you don't have nothing, I'm going to take with nothing, with nothing you have. Why? Because evidently, if you're not receiving, then evidently you're not giving, spiritually, physically, financially. Every day I try to do something with my life. Every day I try to give something away, whether it's spiritual, whether it's physical, or whether it's financial. Some of the greatest gifts I've ever given has been a smile. You'd be surprised, man. I can light up a room with a smile. I've done it many times. I don't go to many hospitals, ladies and gentlemen, because, you know, I'm not a pastor. I travel so much. But when I do go, I, I always remind myself to smile. So I just walk in a hospital with some of the worst thing going on. I go, hey, how y'all doing? Woo! Even intensive care, they go, good Lord. You see people go, they try to break a smile, they go. I said, y'all having problems? And they go, yes. I said, well, have no fear. Jesus is here. Pretty simple. And it's amazing. When you just say the name of Jesus, even if people are not religious, they go, something. See? So it says in verse 25, For he that hath to him shall be given, and he that hath not from him shall be taken even that which he hath. Now verse 26, where I'm trying to get to. And he said, So is the kingdom of God, or God's way of doing things, as if a man should cast seed into the ground, and should sleep and arise night and day, and the seed should spring up, or spring and grow up, and he knoweth not how. In other words, it's not your responsibility to know how it develops. 
It's just your responsibility to sow it. Verse 27 again, and should sleep and rise night and day, that means you shouldn't be worried about what you gave. And the seed should spring and grow up, and he knoweth not. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after the full corn, in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth immediately, now immediately is suddenly his twin brother, immediately he putteth in the sickle. So notice you got to do something. You can't just sit on your porch and wait for God to bring you a harvest. See, not only must you have seed in your hand, you must have a sickle in your hand. Because not only you are a sower, you are a harvester. Now, I don't know much about farming because I was raised in a city. You say, I'm a city boy, you know, but I, I do know this, <clears throat> and I've talked to a lot of farmers, that there's more work at harvest time than there is at sowing time. I never forget, sometimes I've been preaching, in, in, you know, in a grain belt during harvest time, and some of them people stay in them, I believe that's called combines, stay in them combines until 12 o'clock at night. They've been working all day, I mean, as soon as the sun, just trying to get the harvest in. So I've learned something in my life. Here I'm sowing. If, if I must have seed in my hand, but I must have a sickle in my hand. I must have a, a, a harvester to receive what I've already sowed. Now, the reason why I don't have trouble in the summertime like a lot of ministries do is because I sowed in the spring. The reason why I don't have trouble in the springtime is because I sowed in the winter. The reason why I don't have trouble in the wintertime is I sowed in the fall. Reason why I don't have, you know, you understand? So I sow in summer, I sow in fall, I sow in spring, and I, I sow in some, uh, winter, and I sow in summer again. In other words, I'm constantly sowing, <clears throat> but ladies and gentlemen, I'm constantly reaping. You see? Now, when you understand that cycle, it don't make no difference what the world does. Why? Because you're not moved by the economy of the world. You're not working for the world to start with. The world is working for you. Let me tell you something. It's much harder to work money than it is to work for money. I remember years ago, Lord Jesus, if I could just get some money. I found out when I got a, 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 started getting a little finance, I thought it was a lot harder to work that than to work for it. Because you know, when I finished at five o'clock, whatever my job was, I was finished, man. I, I, I you know, earned my day's pay. Oh, but Jesus, when you work at money, you gotta work at 24 hours a day, seven days a week. See, for it to produce. So notice this, it says this in verse 28, for the earth bringing forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, and after the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is, verse 29, but when the fruit is brought forth immediately, he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. And then God begins to speak, whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? The title of this message this morning is, your future is in your seed. So I'm going to first deal with this here. If you look at this first verse here in verse 26, verse 26 is seed time. That's your giving time. Verse 28 is progression time. Now that's where the trials and tribulations and tests of prosperity come. Not in the sowing, but in, in, in the progression time. While that seed is germinating. See, that's where Satan defeats most people. Not in the sowing time or the harvest time, but in the progression time. In other words, the time for seed to grow up. It's like a child. A child just screams to grow. Then after they get a certain age, they just wish they could go back. Now, in, a very, in the next few days, uh, I'm, uh, my birthday is coming up. And, you know, I, I, I'm, really pr I, I'm not worried about my age. I, I could care less about how old I look. <laughs> it doesn't make any... It is getting a little loose. See, it, it is getting a little loose, but that's okay. It don't make no difference. Kathy can't see it, so it doesn't make any difference. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I don't really care that much about that. But I mean, you know, I, you know, if you want to take care of yourself, take care of yourself. Bless God. I had a lady get real mad at me. She said, you ought to preach against faith lifts. I said, I can't. You need one. <laughs> well, she's going to be critical, bless God. I mean, Lord Jesus, you know. I mean, my God, there ain't nobody's business but yours. I tell people, you don't have no teeth. For God's sake, get some. <laughs> and glue them. Because I don't want to be smiling and watch your, feet fall, your teeth fall down. <laughs> so where most people are defeated in, the, in, in their future, whether it's spiritual, physical, or financial, is, is in the progression time. So one verse is seed time. The other uh, verse is progression time. And that last verse here, where immediately you put in the sickle, that's harvest time. Now I want to tell you something. Harvest time is the most work. But progression time, and you might excuse this, usually in people's life is the most worry. And yet the Lord said, you should not fret or worry, or don't doubt about anything. You see, but here's something I do, and I mean this sincerely. I never forget where I sow. Never. I find if you're going to be a good business individual, you, you ought to not forget where your money is. 
I mean, it's kind of stupid to go put money in the bank and forget you got it. Yeah, you know how many people do that? I mean, millions of people literally do that and die. And a lot of times the, the inheritance stays in the bank for years because somebody forgot it. So let's deal with your futures in your seat. When you get pregnant, you got a progression time. Now you're just as pregnant as pregnant be. You can't feel nothing and you can't see nothing, but it's going to happen. All of a sudden your seed is going to begin to take over your life. I'm going to deal with that in a little bit, man, on the progression. All of a sudden, the baby takes over and runs everything. The baby determines whether you look good or not when you're pregnant. Did you know that? It'll bring, it'll bring a, a, a color to your face. They say a pregnant woman is a very beautiful one because she's got life, or she's producing life, and that life is producing for her. So let's deal first with this seed time. Write this down. Nothing great or serious or lasting can ever be done in a hurry. Now, I'm going to tie that into into the statement I've been saying all this week. Nothing great, serious, or lasting can ever be done in a hurry. Do you understand what I'm saying? Hurry is not for you. Some of the greatest, you know, I'm a person, I buy a lot of antiques and things, and I buy a lot of artwork. I, you know, I invest a lot. A lot of people say, but Jesse, how, you know, how, you, what do you do beside your ministry? Well, I invest a lot in, 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 in artwork, and I invest a lot in antiques and real estate and different things of that nature. I, I kind of like doing that kind of stuff. Uh, but you know, some of this furniture <laughs> that, that, that I have purchased in my home is two and three hundred years old, and it just looks as good today as it did when it was made. You know why? It was created not in a hurry. But I wonder how long your couch is going to last. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? Because everybody right now want to do something fast. It's called, you know, get on the line, get it out, you know. Like I bought a piece of furniture that's in, my, in the foyer of my home that was in the, uh, the Palace Versailles. I have it in my house. I just like to go look at it. I just go, ugh. <laughs> then I realized how old that piece of furniture is. I thought, my Lord, that's older than my great-grandfather. That's... That is about the same age as when my family got thrown out of Paris, France and was, went to Nova Scotia where we became Acadians. And they told us to swear to the king and we didn't swear to him. We swore at him, but we didn't swear to him. <laughs> so they throw us, they throw us out. And the four brothers from Paris, France, which was the Duplantis boys, Duplanty, <laughs> migrated out of Nova Scotia down. Three brothers went to the bayous of South Louisiana Two went to New Orleans and then one went to Little Caillou and one went to Victoria, Texas. Now that one that went to Victoria, he was a wild man. He must have loved women. Because the other day I was in Victoria, Texas and a big black man about six foot seven, weighed about 300 pounds, come up to me, he said, my name is Jeffrey Duplantis. Do you think we related? I said, most likely. <laughs> And I don't mind. Say, what color are you? Pick one. I've been there. I won't let you know. <laughs> so nothing great or serious or lasting can ever be done in a hurry. Now, I've been saying this, and you may have wrote it down in the previous sermons. Faith and hurry are incompatible. I find out when I get in a hurry, if I'm driving, I get a ticket. There's always somebody to try to shut down your hurry. You ever notice when you're in a hurry, you always get behind an old grandma on driving a car. Right? Now, when you don't have anything to do, there ain't nobody on the road. Now, there's sometimes you have, you almost, you know, <laughs> you, I, you know, people ask me all the time, but Jesse, I've been knowing you for years. Women don't seem to bother you. I said, nope. He said, drinking and money and all that kind of, you know, a lot of people fall in those things. I said, nope. He said, does it, I had a friend of mine in Dallas, Texas. He said, does anything bother you? I said, yes, traffic. Traffic runs me up a tree, so I bought a plane to fly over it. <laughs> but guess what I ran into? Traffic. Do you know they got interstates right over Los Angeles in planes as well as they got down there on, them, on, on those interstates you got down here? I mean, you just got to get in line. And you don't argue about the situation. See, but every time I've gotten in a hurry, I've made a mistake. Ladies and gentlemen, hurry don't help you at all. Hurry makes you, write this down, hurry makes you overlook the small details of life. You understand what I'm saying? And you're missing some of the greatest things you could have in life. So nothing great, serious, or lasting can ever be done in a hurry. Faith and hurry are incompatible. So when you sow your seed, you're giving in this convention. You've given the last convention. You gave 15 years ago in the convention. You gave 25 years ago in the convention. It doesn't make any difference what time you gave. It does make a difference if you did give. Why? Not so we can get money because we're not trying to get something from you, trying to get something to you. 
You see what I'm saying? I don't believe in finance poverty. I said that the other day. There's so much money in finance poverty. Lord, them children still starve every year. They make sure, bless God, nothing ever changes. They're still stuck out in the desert living in a hole. Why? Because no, you know, and I, I believe in feeding children. I believe in helping people. Don't misunderstand me. But you got to give them more than just some food in a tent. You got to give them the will to prosper. You got to give them something. And the only way you're going to get people to prosper, you don't, <laughs> you can't get rid of poverty with money. That's simply the truth. How do you know that? The federal government, the United States federal government proves that every year. We send billions and billions of dollars overseas and people still poor, people still dying. Isn't that amazing? So what happens is what gets rid of the uh, of poverty in life is the anointing. The Spirit of the Lord God's upon me, for he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. See, when you are an anointed minister, anointed minister Jer Jerry was preaching last night, preaching good news, it will seed into someone's heart. And it will get them not only out of their financial trouble, but it will get them out of their natural trouble and spiritual trouble. In other words, it begins to change the whole process. So, in other words, when you understand, you sow. So when you sow, you realize that faith and hurry are incompatible. Now write this down. The evidence of faith is not seen, but the evidence of doubt is. You see what I'm saying? The evidence of, I don't know why everybody's wanting to see something when they believe in God for something. The Bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You see, so to me, that's pretty simple. I don't need a theologian to help me figure that out. So if I'm praying and I'm believing God, brother, and I can't see it, <laughs> I got it. Why? Because my evidence is not seen. So when the devil says, can you see it? I said, no. He said, well, aren't you sad? I said, no, that's my evidence that I got it. Now he gets confused pretty easy. He's the author of confusion. See, I'm not moved when I see it. I'm moved when I believe it. You see, the evidence of faith is not saying, well, what happens, Brother Jesse, when you see it? Well, then it's no longer faith, it's manifestation. Now, the evidence of doubt is seen all the time. Doubt is never a spiritual thing. Write that down. Doubt is never a spirit. Doubt is always a natural, secular thing. Doubt is seen constantly. Oh, you can pick up doubt quick, much easier than you can pick up faith. Because see, faith doesn't have a real big voice, but it does have a big footprint. Now, doubt got a big voice, ain't got a lick of a footprint whatsoever at all. Because it never knows, it doubts itself. You've heard people say, and I've said it too, if you learn to doubt your doubts, you won't be a doubter no more because your doubts have been doubted because you've learned to doubt your doubts. God said all things are possible to them that believe. The devil said that's not true. So when the devil throws doubt in your mind, doubt it. <laughs> Just use what he's using. He puts doubt in your mind and said, devil, I doubt that. He said, you can't doubt that. I said, I doubt your doubt. You can't doubt that. I'm, that's, that's my doubt. I doubt your doubt. <laughs> yeah, but, but that's my doubt. I don't care if your doubt. I doubt your doubt. Now the devil gets confused. He starts talking to other devils. He said, listen, I put doubt in a man's mind and he doubted. He said, how did he do that? I said, I don't know. I'm still doubting it myself. I don't know how he done it. <laughs> did you get that? <laughs> so the evidence of faith is not seen, but the evidence of doubt is. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why it's so important to not be moved by what you see, but be moved by what you believe. What do you believe? Listen, I don't deny what I see. I see a lot of things, but I deny it's right to affect me. Why? Because I, I, I go by what I believe. I go by the word of God. I believe the word of God. What do you believe when it comes to sowing and reaping? Now, just quit thinking about just money. It's everything. It's spiritual. It's physical. It's financial. It's everything. What do you believe about that? I heard all my life, give and don't expect anything in return. Well, that's a lie. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible said, what you sow, you're going to reap. Be not deceived. God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. The Bible says that God created this world to work by the laws of seed time and harvest time. Go ahead, say harvest time. Go ahead, say it. Seed time and harvest time. God said, as long as the earth remained, there would be seed time and harvest time. So let me tell you something. No matter what you do, spiritual, physical, or financial, you're going to reap something from it. So you might as well sow good seed. If you want to receive a harvest from what you sow, it's not enough to just give. Let me talk about that. People say, well, I gave. Hey, that's no, that's not enough. What do you mean? You have to have faith to receive that. In other words, when you planted that seed, you can walk away because your faith is in that seed. Your faith is in that soil. And guess what? It will produce a 30, 60, and 100-fold return. That is in red, ladies and gentlemen. Look what it says in Mark eleven twenty four. 24. What things, notice this, things, so ever you desire, not God desire, 
you desire when you pray. I love that. Believe that you receive them. Didn't say when you get it. Didn't say when you see it. It said when you pray. Believe that you receive them. And then the Bible said you shall have them. That's what I do all my life. I've done that all my life. When I prayed, I believed that I received. How many times I was believing God for something? People said, well, I can't see it. Well, I'm not moved by what I see. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Ooh, I'm starting to preach here. Listen to me. If you're ready to walk in the future God has for you, I encourage you today. You need to order this message. Due to time constraints on television, we just cannot play at all. Go to JDM.org for all that information. Your future is in your seed. It's also one of the many messages available on Total JDM. I love Total JDM. Let me tell you something, buddy. It's a blessing of God. People, I get on the road, they say, boy, that Total JDM is something. Why? Because we have many great messages and it's such a blessing of the Lord. I am believing God with you today. What are you believing for? Spiritual, physical, and financial. You know, people say this all the time, but Jesse, you look so healthy. You know why? I saw healing. In fact, I'm going to do, I'm going to sow some healing right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I speak healing to every individual that's watching today. Cancer, I bind you. You have a name and you have to bow at the name of Jesus. I speak healing to any kind of disease today and I command it to be released from people's bodies in Jesus' name. Just because I prayed that prayer, I sowed healing in your life. Guess what I get? I get help. See, the harvest off of healing is health. Glory to God. I feel good. Do I look good? I hope so, because I feel good. Partners, thank you for helping me preach this gospel. Oh, you know, in 41 years of full-time ministry, we've never had a financial deficit. Why? God Almighty and you, my partners. Boy, I tell you what, I can rely on you, and you know you can rely on me. We have a trust factor. It's called a covenant trust. We, you know, you, said, you, know you, 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 you open up a trust. Well, brother, we opened up a trust 41 years ago. I haven't broke it and you haven't neither. I thank you. Many more projects to do for Jesse the Plants Ministries here. Whoo, God's got me working 90 to nothing. And your faithful financial support is so vitally important. We got $26 million worth of projects on my desk right now. I said, Lord Jesus, I guess God don't care about the color of my hair. <laughs> he don't make him no difference. He said, Jesse, I gave you energy. And I gave you partners to help you. Now go preach this gospel. Ooh, Lord. We came back not long ago. For, we flew 24,002 miles. To go around the planet Earth is 24,840 miles. Now, we were out preaching every day. I mean, and people were being saved, healed, and blessed. Partners, I credit that to you. I'm telling you, because I couldn't have went without you. You were so courteous and kind to faithfully support this ministry financially. If you're not a partner, you pray about becoming one. I mean that sincerely. I'm telling you, the anointing increases on me. You're going to get blessed. You're going to get blessed. I'm not being arrogant here. I'm telling you, this soil is great soil. So there's other great soils too. Don't misunderstand me. But I know what this one does, and God is so good and gracious. So partners, thank you for supporting us. Whew, I, I, I hope me and Kathy say thank you enough. I, I, you know, sometimes I said, Lord... Do I get it over to the people? Do I get up what I'm, what I'm doing here? I could have retired years ago. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in reaching people, changing lives one soul at a time. Can't do it by myself. But your faithful financial support helps me. Stay right there. I'll be back in just a moment. I want to show you a few things that are happening here at Jesse the Planet's Ministries. I am enjoying today. Are you ready to be blessed? Watch this. I'll be back in a moment. Seed will always produce change. You should always give attention to your seed. Chance has no part in seed time and harvest time because in that seed is the creation of everything. The seed must be sown. Seed power. It works, not sometimes, but all the time. Available for your August partnership of $50 or more. Visit JDM.org for more information. A special Friday event in Nashville, Tennessee with Jesse and Kathy Duplantis. August 16th at Faith is the Victory Church. Join Kathy at 10 a.m. He's just looking for somebody that'll say, yes, Lord, I believe it. And Jesse at 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. Get ready to be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going in, blessed going out. Don't miss this special Friday event. For more information, go to JDM.org. You know, Kathy and I are so excited about our special Friday event. I'm coming to Nashville at Faith is the Victory Church. 
Pastor Charles Cowan. And we're going to be there all day. Kathy's going to preach in the morning at 10 o'clock, and I'm going to preach that night. Both of us are going to be there at both services. It's on Friday, August the 16th, right there in Nashville, Tennessee. Country. Hallelujah. I really hope you can make it there. I'd love to meet you and see you. We've had so many wonderful times in Nashville. Bless God. It's just such a blessing. Remember, that's Friday the 16th. Kathy's going to, we're going to be at Faith is the Victory Church. That's 10 a.m. Kathy's preaching. Now, I'm going to be there with her. And then 7 o'clock that night, right there at Faith is the Victory, Nashville, Tennessee. Go to jdm.org for more details. You'll be blessed. Also, I'm excited about this. I just released my brand new book, Yo, Everything is His Anything. It's been my theme for the year, and it's based on St. John chapter 14, verses 13 and 14. God has given me so much revelation on this that I wrote a book just for you. Yo, everything is his anything. You heard that title? Everything is his anything. It says, whatsoever you shall ask in my name. Ooh, what does whatsoever mean to you? He said, I'll do it. If you ask anything, Jesus said, I'll do it. Wow, man, that's big, isn't it? That's spiritual, physical, financial. Oh, you got to get this book. You'll be blessed. I mean that sincerely. And I wrote it for people. I said, I'm tired of people struggling spiritually, physically, and financially when the Bible is so vitally important. It's right in front of you. Every answer to anything comes your way right here. That's what that book is about. Boy, I'll tell you what. You need to get it. You'll be blessed. Don't miss next week. Part two of your future is in your seed. It's time for you to sow a seed right now. If you're a partner, you send in your seed, believe for your harvest, and we're going to believe God with you for 30, 60, and 100 fold and a thousand time return. See you next week. Okay, I love you. God bless you. Bye-bye. Can you really have everything God has put on your heart? Can you ask anything in Jesus' name? Jesus says you can. Jesse's book, Your Everything Is His Anything, will revolutionize your life. Whether you have a vision, a dream, or something that your heart desires, your everything is as anything is going to inspire you to believe and achieve it all. It's time to expand your view of what prayer and faith can do in your life. Your everything is his anything. Order your copy today. Are y'all ready to experience what God has for you? Glory can be released anytime you call on the name of Jesus. I want you to see this. There's seed time now, that's progression time. As I said earlier, that's where most people are defeated in life is in the progression or in the growing or the germinating of your seed. See, now you've given and you were proud to give, but then all of a sudden the devil begins to go to work and begin to say, you see that? You done lost your money. 